Okay, next part is putting the scene together in Unreal Engine and exporting it to Blender to animate with, right? I decided not to really teach how to make a full scene as there's plenty of tutorials and assets focused only on that elsewhere. I want to focus only on the workflow, the glue, for now. Here I'm going to spawn like a bunch of random objects for Ryuko to simply animate with. <clears throat> I want to do like a parkour motion because I I just never really start with uh, walking. Walking's harder than parkour, imagine that. I have no idea how I went from sliding on the hood of a car to jumping over a train, but whatever. I'm going to spawn different types of objects and show how they interact with the exporting process because some things don't export and some things export looking kind of weird. Alright, so now we're going to you know, select the different objects in the scene we want to export in the blender. And then, of course, export selected in the file. I usually prefer .object files. They run usually pretty good in Blender. Uh, pick the space you want to save it to. And then... Save it. This pop-up will say if you want to export like textures onto it. Of course, you don't want to work with like simple faceless objects. It's weird. Alright, so once we're in Blender, we're going to import object, and in the preset I have only changes the geometry option from split to keep for order. The difference is, if it's split, every piece that you export from UE4 is going to come in the outliner as its own mesh, and so your outliner could be obscenely huge, depending on how many things you export, while uh, keep vert order is going to be a uh, combining all that into one mesh, but you're still able to go into edit mode and separate from there by using like the material tab and then selecting. Very useful. Now as you see here is the difference between Blender's scaling versus Unreal Engine scaling. So Ryuko's ridiculously tiny here while uh, the scene is well ridiculously huge. Now as you can see with what was imported it's quite interesting. The camera from the blueprint was imported, but not the mesh of this of the mannequin. And the trees are have been imported with some ridiculous red flat texture on them. So it's best to like import static meshes. But hey, everything else is fine. We have the ground, we have the properly scaled steps and, and the train. All working good. So now that we have our scene in here. We're going to want to scale Ryuko up in order to match the environment. But it's very important you scale the model first and apply transformations before you do any animating. The import into Unreal Engine is going to be as tiny as Ryuko was, but all the animation and stuff will you know fit that character. But then all the physics in Unreal Engine are going to break, but they're going to work fine in Blender. But then if you scale everything up in Blender, then you've got to adjust all the physics to be, like, insanely sped up because of how massive your objects are going to be. But in Unreal Engine, it might, it's going to work great. <laughs> but of course, there's this whole weird scaling process with Blender to Unreal Engine where you got to put the scale of the scene to 0.01 .01 or something like that. I'm still experimenting, honestly. But then, what if you had something that was, like, far away? Not a scene that was like up close and easy to export. As you saw, everything exported in its exact location from where it was in Unreal Engine. But then, if your scene is super far away, you don't want to export from Blender when your scene's like a mile away. That, that's, that's a lot of moving the camera around. So what I personally do is I would create objects to kind of match the environment in the scene and like one central object for everything to be parented to. So like this cylinder is going to be like the ground for this fountain area. And not only that, it's going to be the spawning point for where the scene kind of spawns from or animates around. It'll make sense in a bit, but for now, the scene now needs to be parented to this uh, cylinder. So I'm going to grab a bunch of different houses and parent it to the cylinder. And speaking of parenting, if you have something that is 
animated that you're parenting to, then everything else is going to have to be also set to movable in the details panel. Because uh, static meshes don't like parenting to movable meshes, and movable meshes don't like parenting to static meshes. So they gotta all be under the same roof before they're parented with each other. So now what I do is I copy the location, just in case I'm an idiot, uh, and I then reset the location to 000, which is going to be the world origin point that Unreal Engine exports from. That's how it keeps track where everything is in relation to this exact point. That's why it's called the world origin. So if the cylinder, as a parent, is at the world origin and the scene is connected to that, then everything that I want in the scene is going to be exported in the blender at, at that point. The cool thing about this is that you can have different scenes that you can turn off and on and you can just keep animating your character from the central point of Blender rather than going miles away. Of course, sometimes you're working with blocks instead of the actual environment, but it's fine. It usually is very easy to fix in Unreal Engine by just moving the characters around bit by bit. But we gotta move back to the original scene, so let's undo what we did with the parenting and the moving. Move all the way back to this scene. And then we can undo all the parenting stuff, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. What's important, though, is this location data. If we copy this, then this is where the Blender imported character is going to go. This is what they require for it to match the scene. Like, if I were to bring Deanne in here, like, and then somewhat line this up, the animation that would play. Let's grab one real quick. It would be offset somewhere, right? And wherever she would go, it wouldn't quite match up. So, what you gotta do is <clears throat> paste the location data here, and then bam. It all lines up with where it did in Blender, so that you don't have to worry about things lining up too much. Although I, I think the further away you get from uh, the zero point in Blender, it kind of gets a little bit inaccurate. Uh, it, it, like, it's like it loses its accuracy. But on top of that, there's this thing you need to keep track of called bounds scale right here. Where the further away an object gets from its world origin point, or this this point right here, because as we see further on in the animation, she gets, she starts walking away from her origin point. Then it's going to lose shadow quality and it's going to require higher bound scale. And super small objects will become invisible, like say some food in the bag or something like that. You'd have to raise this all the way to like, like 90. Or, or 500, like the merchant all the way, like I had a character that all the way, it was all the way at the egg over there, and I had to raise this to like 500 or 600, or 3000, just to make him appear on camera, because he would just disappear. Bounce scale is important, but it also messes with your shadows, so you gotta be careful with this setting, although I am generous with it quite a few times.